Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about elements of plasticity in clays and, and clay bodies and um, talk about what um, causes plasticity and why we it's, a, it's usually desirable in a clay body or casting slip. Um, there are a few instances say if you're ramming bricks like fire bricks or the bricks you would build a kiln with you don't actually need plasticity but when we're working with a malleable clay for throwing hand building even slip casting we want some plasticity and so that means that when we take a little bit of clay and roll it into coil and then fold that coil over into like a upside down u it doesn't break at my knuckle like it stays it stretches um, and it has an elastic quality that um, is, makes it easier to work with. The opposite thing from plasticity is short, called shortness in clay. And shortness in clay it might be um, one way to think about it is if you've ever made a pie crust and they can be really hard to hold together, they, they're likely to crack or crumble apart as you're trying to get the rolled out crust into the pie pan that is a very short dough. Now if you're making a bread dough and the bread has um, been kneaded and worked to bring out the glutinous structure so that you can stretch it and it will expand as, as it rises, um, that is the bread equivalent of plasticity, something that you need a lot of in um, throwing, hand building, and to a great extent, but not quite the same extent, you need it in um, casting slip as well. So the main thing um, that makes clay plastic just generally is the flat platelet uh, shape of clay. It's like, if you can imagine, it's kind of like a bunch of um, plates that you would eat dinner off of stacked in your in your cabinet, they, that, that's how the shape of, of clay particles, although they have a sort of hexagonal edge, um, they are 10 times wider than they are thick. So, um, so that's, that um, quality means that one, if you think of clay particles as being like a stack of cards, like you get water in between each stack in that, of each card in that stack, then all of a sudden, they're really gonna be stuck together with suction. And so that's what happens with clay particles when they get wet. And so just the very nature of clay and, and its particle structure does cause plasticity. However, um, um, and then I would also say that the smaller the size of the particles, so with ball clays, which have a very small particle size and frequently as well, um, red earthenwares, those tend to be very plastic clays. Um, but then other clays like stoneware are highly dependent on the deposit. They could be very plastic and small particles or they could be really large and not plastic. Um, so, uh, so basically particle size, size causes plasticity, but also very importantly, hi proper hydration of clay. So when you're making your clay body, making sure that it gets really, really wet. Um, and that every particle is fully saturated with water, that's going to make your clay more um, plastic. So when we make clay in the studio, which we don't do a lot, but when we do, it's actually going to make a more plastic clay if you over-saturate, over-water the clay, and then let it dry out to come back to normal throwing or hand-building um, workability. Um, so... So another thing that affects um, plasticity is just really properly processing your clay, um, thoroughly mixing it, wedging it really well, or pugging, de-airing it if you use a pug mill. Um, that is important. Another thing that's really important is that the organic materials that have entered your clay particles, your, the clay itself, um, during the process of decomposition as geologically as the clay has transitioned from being granite to being um, a broken down granite that is a clay. Um, so a lot of times there's been a lot of organics that probably have landed on, in the clay that has broken down and composted and that organic material 
acts as almost like an adhesive in the clay, making it more um, plastic. Those organic materials also often add some color to your clay, so that's one of the reasons why a porcelain clay is both white and not plastic. Um, so another thing um, that, that uh, causes plasticity is what we call souring, and that is adding the water to your clay body actually causes the decomposition of all that organic material that um, is in the, naturally just occurring in your clay deposit. So leaving, it leaves the um, oxygen to produce to bacteria which produce amino acids and these the amino acids flocculate small clay, clay particles creating a gel that is um, causes plasticity in your clay so but that doesn't happen in instantaneously souring or kind of building the bacterial um, bonds in your clay that come from the organic material takes time at least um, uh, a little bit of you know, a few weeks ideally. So, so not only having those organics and letting them do their thing, but time causes plasticity because the more time the clay sits around, the more of those organic materials will have um, developed to become sort of a gel or um, gel-like um, substance in your clay, making it more plastic. Um, and then again, it just takes time for the, for the particles to fully saturate with water. So time also and aging your clay allows your clay to be um, better hydrated and that causes plasticity. All uh, right, so that is just my little talk on plasticity. Um, the next video, if you're following these in the order for our, our lab, will be my talk on um, decorative slips and ongobes. Thank you.